Hi, I'm Justin. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate our software and our services to practice administrators, billers, and front and back office staff. Our software is completely web-based. We house the data on 11 time redundant servers in Utah and California. Our servers have over a 99.995 uptime, so they are very reliable. We also increase your HIPAA compliance by 300% due to the encryption that we've put into our software. The first thing you're going to see when you log into the software is the dashboard. If you have an administrator username and password, you're going to see this screen here with all the financial information to the right. For any non-administrator, their username and password will have this information blocked. With an administrative username and password, you will be able to see your accounts receivable on the top right hand corner. This graph shows you your current 30, 60, 90, and 120 day plus buckets. Underneath that we have what we call our performance indicators. This will show you your current month to date, last month to date, and last month numbers, and it will show you visits, procedures, charges, payments, etc. You can also run that by year if you choose to do so. In addition to this information on the dashboard, we have over 220 reports in the system. You can see we have parent categories here and also subcategories underneath those. With those 220 reports in the system, if there is a report that does not meet the needs of your practice, we also can do customized reports where we develop a report specifically for you. In this screen, we can see all the patient's information at a glance. Notice this is the screen where we would put in all of the patient's information such as address, phone number, date of birth, social security number. From this screen here, we can easily navigate into the different sections of this patient's chart. For example, the responsible party tab where we can see the information on the responsible party, the insurance information where we would enter in the patient's carrier, patient subscriber ID, group number, copay, etc. We also have the electronic eligibility module where we can check the patient's benefits before they even come in. Other tabs on the bottom include referrals, appointments where we can see the patient's past and present appointments, tasks where we can see tasks that are listed onto the patient's chart, transaction entry where we can see if the patient has any balance outstanding or any insurance balance outstanding, also notes where we can enter in notes into the software and chart files where we can scan in documents to the system. Scans include op reports, office notes, or even scans of the insurance card and or driver's license. The next section is our appointment scheduler. The appointment scheduler is where we can see the appointments for the day and our appointment scheduler is completely customizable. As you can see, the, the scheduler is built based on columns. So we have four columns on this sample schedule here. And we can do one column per provider, we can do one column per specialty, or we can do one column per treatment room. From the screen here, we can see all the information that we need to see on the patients for the day. For example, if I want to see the information for this particular patient, Delilah, I can simply mouse over the patient appointment and it'll pop up a box and let me know everything I need to know about this appointment the appointment type, how long it's going to take, any custom comments that were typed in the visit, home, work phone, and also the patient's provider for the day. I can also click on this appointment and it's going to give me some options for this particular appointment. For example, delete this visit, copy this visit, or even move this visit to a different day on the schedule. I can see all the future appointments for this patient going forward. I can print a charge slip. We will talk about this going forward in a different section. I can also see the appointment history of this patient. I can also no-show or cancel this particular patient. If I do that, it'll give me some reasons why I want to cancel. And this is for if you want to track these reasons, such as if you want to run reports based on how many patients forgot or how many patients want to reschedule their appointments, you can do that. Also, I can check in this patient or check out. And this will timestamp the visit based on when they're checked in and when they're checked out. So you can see how long it's taking the patients to come from door to door times. From the screen here, you can take a copay in the system. For example, the system tells us that there's a $20 copay for this patient. So I can simply collect this $20, whether it's check, cash, Visa, MasterCard, etc., into the screen here. I can even capture the credit card information from the screen 
or I can enter in the authorization number from my terminal. I can also do a receipt. If I check this receipt box, okay, this particular patient will have the payment posted to their account. Now that we have the patient information in the system, now we need to put the patient's charge information into the system so that we can bill it out. There are four ways of putting charges into the Silvertree system. The first way is to have charge slips or super bills scanned or faxed over to the office and we will enter in the information here at Silvertree. The second method of charge entry is to have somebody at your location do the charge entry into the system. Somebody such as a coder or somebody that's trusted, we will train them on how to do it. The third way to do it is what's called an EMR integration or electronic medical records integration. The fourth method of charge entry is what we call our online charge slips. The reason why we created this online charge slip is we wanted to make an easy way and a paperless way to have charges be tracked in the system and accurately sent over to Silvertree. As you can see, all the patients that are listed on the schedule are on this left-hand side. So for example, if I wanted to take this patient here and enter charges, all I would need to do is simply click on the boxes associated with the charges for this visit. And the same thing for the diagnosis codes. Click on the diagnosis codes for, these, for this visit. Now all this is completely customizable. Now if a diagnosis code, for example, is not on your list, you can do a search, for example, cervicalgia, hit search, it's going to search the full ICD-9 uh, AMA book, American Medical Association book, and here's cervicalgia 723.1. I'm going to hit OK and that's going to drop in this list. At this time, once everything is, is checked here, I can hit process and all these charges will come over to Silvertree for billing. The next section is the claim center. Now the claim center is really where Silvertree takes over. Now there are three sections we're going to talk about here in the claim center. The first is the charge review, the claim inspector, and also the EDI reports. Charge review is exactly what it sounds like. It's a place for where all the charges are entered in the system where they come at first key. So what our staff is going to do here at Silvertree is we're going to look at this with human eyes first. We're going to look at the data service to make sure it jives with what we're, what we're trying to build. We're going to look at the procedure codes. We're also going to make sure that a diagnosis code is on each line item. And we're also going to make sure that the appropriate fee is being charged. If we bill zero dollars to an insurance company, they're going to pay zero dollars. At this point, what we will do is we can select these visits and hit approve or make any changes if we need to. We're going to hit approve and then they will be sent to our claim inspector. Now the claim inspector is one of the most impactful tools of our software because we are connected to all 1100 insurance carriers nationwide. What happens is the insurance carriers give us an electronic data set of how they want the claims to look when they come across their front door. If there is any rejections or differences, it's going to flag us in the system before it even gets sent to the insurance carrier. This particular error would be we're trying to bill a, a procedure code 84443 to Medicare. Okay, And Medicare is saying, if you look in the middle here, per NCD guidelines as stated by the policy number by Medicare, Diagnosis code 345.90 does not support medical necessity for procedure code 84443. So what Medicare is telling us is if we were to send this claim to Medicare, they're going to deny the claim. So what we would do in this situation is contact your office and find a different diagnosis code uh, so that we can bill that to Medicare. This is another uh, error that would come back. So we're trying to bill a 99213, again, to Medicare. And basically what Medicare is saying is that this e &M service, or this evaluation management service, procedure code 99213, should not be billed as the same data service as a history procedure without modifier 25. Okay, So if we don't have that 25 modifier on this particular claim, Medicare is going to deny this claim. What we do at this point is we go and we fix the modifiers in the system, re-inspect them through the system, and if they clear, then, then they automatically get sent to the carrier. And one thing that's important to note that this is all um, pre-claim submission. This particular procedure code 96372, we're trying to build to operating engineers. And what they're saying is that separate billing is allowed for supply of injectable materials when injection is performed in an office setting. 
review the documentation, add the appropriate supply code. What this is telling us is we're trying to bill an injection to the insurance company, but we did not put the correct um, injectable material on the claim. So we would add that injectable material to the claim, in this case would be a J code, and we will add that to the claim so that we can bill that to the carrier. And so we are actually capturing lost revenue based on being able to bill for more in case we don't put enough information into the system. The system's gonna catch that and let us know, hey, you can bill more codes, you can bill more stuff, uh, you know, go ahead and add that to the claim. Really what I want you to pull away from it is it's very thorough. It's gonna scrub the claims prior to sending them to the insurance company. We can fix the claims before we send them to the insurance company. And this is how we can guarantee the 95% first claim acceptance at the carrier first time pass because we bring it through the charge review and the claim inspector. The last section we're gonna talk about here in the claim center is the EDI reports. And really what the EDI reports are is EDI stands for electronic data interchange. And these reports are a result of what we call the trifecta, which is electronic billing, electronic remittance, and electronic funds transfer. So let me explain those to you. Electronic claims, so all the claims are gonna be sem submitted electronically to the carriers. Electronic remittance, all the claims coming back from the insurance carrier, all the, all the correspondence coming back from the insurance carrier is gonna be electronic. And thirdly, electronic funds transfer, when the uh, payments come from the insurance carrier, um, it's going to be electronically deposited into the into the provider's account. We use these reports for two major functions. The first function is, for example, let's say we take 100 claims and we submit it to Blue Cross Blue Shield. We're going to get a report back from Blue Cross Blue Shield that says, okay, we received your 100 claims at this time, at this date, by this department. And so when we go back and do claim follow-up, if Blue Cross Blue Shield were to tell us, that we never received your claim, we come in here and we pull the appropriate report in the system. The second reason we use these reports is let's say Blue Cross Blue Shield were to come back and say, we received your 100 claims, say 98 were, of them were accepted and two of them were rejected. It'll tell us why those two claims were rejected. Now this is an actual report that we get back from the insurance carrier, so it's blacked out for security, obviously. Here's one from Aetna. And it's saying, if you can see the highlighting, it's that it was missing the admission date for the hospital. Missing an admission date. Here's one from Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, and it was missing the subscriber ID. So the benefit to having this report is we correct these claims and then submit them real time. By the time you do all that work and send the claims, you're looking at uh, 90 to 120 days into your AR cycle before this claim gets paid. With this system, we can catch it right away when we submit the claims, fix it, and send a, send a corrected claim right behind it the same day. The goal of all this technology is to get paid. All these bells and whistles don't mean a thing unless we can get paid by the insurance company accurately and efficiently. So the next section I want to show is the payment center. So this would be a, an example of a payment that would come back from the insurance company. As you can see here, this is coming back from Aetna. All the information is already on the screen uh, electronically from the information, such as the payment amount, the check number, uh, the date of service, the visit ID, et cetera, is all on the screen here. So as you can see, uh, we build this procedure code to Aetna, a 99233. Uh, we billed them $197.46. And they came back and they allowed $88.88 on this particular claim. Furthermore, they came back and they paid $79.97. So you can see there's a difference between the allowed amount and also the payment amount. What our system's going to do is it's going to do two things. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to make sure that this allowed amount meets your contracted rate for the carrier. So let's say you have contracted rates that you have with your insurance carrier and you know that when you bill this particular uh, procedure code, a 99233 to Aetna, your allowed amount is X. The system's going we to, we, if you know what those amounts are, we put those into the system and the system scrubs and makes sure that this $88.86 meets that threshold. If it does not meet that threshold, it's gonna flag us on a report. This would be a report that would pop up if that allowed amount did not meet the contracted rate. So as you can see here, it gives us a list of all the charges. So here's a particular charge code that we're charging. Uh, we charge 255 
and we're expecting $255, but the insurance company, for example, only allowed $80.50. So we can see that there's a difference between what we what we uh, actually what they actually allowed versus what we expected. Anytime there's a difference in those reports, such as a difference in what they allowed on this claim versus what we expect, it's going to flag on that report. What we do is we'll call the insurance company, make sure that that particular claim gets adjudicated correctly. 12% of all claims are underpaid. Our system catches that based on that report that I just showed you. The second thing our system is going to do is going to make sure that somebody pays this bill. So for example, the allowed amount was $88.86, but the insurance company only paid $79.97. Okay, if I look at this detail here, I can see that the coinsurance for this claim was $8.89. That's patient responsibility. The system will automatically send a, a statement to the patient saying that, that they owe that money if the patient had not paid that in the office. This would be a, a, a sample statement that the patient would get. Um, in the top left hand corner here, it's going to have the practice information so the patient knows where the bill is coming from. Uh, it's going to have the patient's information here. Um, it's also going to have, if there's a separate PO box or billing address, if the facility or, or office wants the patient payment sent to a certain address, it can go to that address there. And then it's also going to have a detail of what happened. So it will show, for example, the data service and the description of what was, what was done for the patient. And it'll also show what, why the patient has that bill. So if it was deductible or copay or coinsurance, that would be listed right here on the statement. Same thing for anything else that they're billed for, data service, and also the, uh, the note. On the bottom of that here, it'll show what the payment is due to the patient. But the most important part of our statements, you'll notice, is that our phone number is at the bottom. And then also that phone number, that same phone number is at the top. We're taking those phone calls here. The patients are going to call that number. We're answering the phones. You're, you don't have to be bombarded you know, with all those patient phone calls at your office. Thank you for watching the demo.